Hello, everybody. I have a black screen. There we go. My name is Sunspan, joined by Brax. How are you, friend? I am fantastic. I can't wait to see all these disgusting-looking heroes. Great. Join the spectator slot with me, friend. Right up top. Beautiful. Let's you know, the biggest buff the hero on the left, Parasite, could get is just not being so ugly. That's true. Nah, that that's part of his charm, though. You know? Like, look how many layers of... How do you have that many layers of teeth on top of each other? Especially the top row. <laughs> that know. is just disgusting. So, uh, right now we have a few known people. I, this does not look even at all. Korok and Sindarin are on the same team. Shane is on the opposite team. We'll see what if they actually try to balance this in any form. Uh, Sindarin will be playing Lethal, and this is what this video is going to be about. Um... Right now, there are four heroes in this mod. Essentially, if you guys have never seen anything like this, or even though there's been a bunch of videos, this is essentially Dota 2 with custom heroes. Uh, so you get to pick from all the heroes that you're used to, plus four right now additional heroes. And our plan is to add a new hero every couple weeks. Uh, the next one is going to be played by the great Brax. Are you excited for that one? I can't wait. Jeremy's my man. <laughs> I can't. I actually thought of a really hilarious uh, intro for that hero uh, that I'll run by you later today. Um, but yeah, this video, I might go over some very basic stuff just for Brax's sake on Ooze. But for the most part, we're just going to be talking about Lethal. All, pick. All right. We're in. We are in. Let's hope this goes well. Uh, so, one... what do you expect to see out of this game? Do you think Cinderin's going to own on Lethal or feed? Uh, I think he'll do okay. Um, cause something I was talking about before we recorded was the fact that Lethal, based on a lot of feedback from really good players, they thought he was a little underpowered, uh, like not able to solo kill very easily despite getting a lot of levels. Um, and really bad against like mobile heroes like Quop and, you know, AM, things like that. But a lot of people that, saw the concept or the, the, the spotlight video, they thought that Lethal was just completely OP, but they never actually played him. So what we did is we, we buffed his Divine Intervention, which is his single target slow, essentially. It many stuns and then slows, but now it does max HP damage percentage. So that gives him a little bit of extra damage, which in conjunction with his Mystic Twister will allow him to actually get some solo kills. So we'll see what Cinderin is able to to get going so this time around. I have a question. Is that max health of Lethal or max health of the target? Max health of the target. Okay. So it's like um, Doom Infernal Blade, except it's not damage over... Oh, sorry, it is damage over time, so it's exactly like that. Okay, so it's a mix of like a single target upheaval in Infernal Blade. Yeah, oh, with something a slow. like that. So you just mix right. like eight abilities into one and call it balanced. Yeah, something like that. I mean, if you're talking about something that's imbalanced right now, it is, and I'm not sure if he's going to even play well, is Panda right now playing Viscous Ooze. His Q is, just look how much text there is on this tooltip. That will be getting nerfed very shortly. Uh, but yeah. It's like the Monkey King feature. Not only does it destroy everything, but it lags you. Uh, that has been fixed. Okay. Yeah, we had, we had a lot of FPS right. issues, but I mean, I don't know about your computer. If it's going to lag you, you tell me, I guess. But the the particles on Ooze have been scaled down dramatically. So you played a little bit of Lethal before he got this change with the damage with his Q. Uh, how did you feel like he should be played? Is he like this... Like, when you first saw him, did you look at him as a mid laner? I looked at his abilities and I was like, they. it seems like you need so many levels. And mm -hmm. it's not like you can sit in a dual lane or a tri lane and channel mystic twister or anything like that the first skill divine intervention definitely can but um i just looked at it as a hero that needed a lot of levels so yeah. to me mid came to mind right away so for people watching on vod and on the stream actually the dota cinema stream this is going to be i mean it's going to be a very casual cast we're not going to like go crazy on the other lanes we're going to focus mostly on the thaw we'll try to keep up on other lanes just a little bit just to get an idea of what's going on uh korok is playing dark willow mid cindern of course on lethal and Shane is playing Ko. He's actually getting rocked right now in the top lane. Ko is it's kind of a weird hero because as he dies, which we don't care about again. 
Shane actually gave up first blood. We told him to throw. He's doing it a little too early, I think. <laughs> he must have thought that they were already winning that hard. <laughs> yeah. So the skill that you're seeing right now is another single target for uh, Lethal. It's called Conviction. So the interesting thing about this hero is these first three abilities are all channeling. Um, and his ultimate allows him to channel multiple spells in a way. So, uh, which you'll see shortly because at level three, you're able to actually pick up his first level ultimate. Although I don't think... I would assume you don't get his ulti right away. You probably wait till like five or something like that. But I guess yeah, we'll see. I would agree. It's good for the escape, but outside of that, not too useful early on. Yeah, and it's not like we've seen a lot of pro players play this hero, so I could be wrong on some of these builds. But the no conviction, one? which again is channeled, you can cast it on yourself or en or sorry or allies, and it gives you a bunch of HP reg regeneration and also status resistance. But it it does feel like a one point wonder. I doubt he'll be leveling this anymore until the others are maxed, but we'll see. Okay, so Cinder actually did get the uh, the ultimate at level three, and he just used it to to link the Dark Lord. Then he auto attacked him once. That was about it. <laughs> They're already ganking him. <laughs> uh oh, he's in a bit of trouble. Looks like he's oh, gonna go no. down. TP a little bit too late from Magic Cactus. That's a great name. Just Magic terrific. Cactus trying to assist. You know that's. That's the, uh, you know, my hero can't do anything when I TP anyways, but <laughs> I'm going to try my best. I mean, he's playing Centaur. Like, it's pretty garbage anyway. Exactly. Poor guy. Used all his mana on that that hoof stomp as well. Sad to see. So Cinder not off to a great start. Dark Willow Korok, 13-7 and seven versus Cinderin's 7-0. and oh. I mean, the interesting thing about this here, and I still, I mean, we've kind of talked about it in private. The fact that he's melee kind of changes a lot about how you play this hero, right? Yeah, you'd assume with the skill set that you're kind of range and you want to sit on like the outskirts of fights. But being melee definitely mixes that up a bit. Do you think, um, considering how this hero works, that no. there's any way to kind of build him as a right-click carry using his illusions? Yeah, look at that level 20 talent. The, the left one, super position... Uh, illusion damage taken minus mm -hmm. 100. You can just litter the map with illusions if you want and play the, the Naga style. Right. You know, Radiance, Octarine, Manta. If you really wanted to, but I hope it, I, I hope that's not what's popular. <laughs> I, I've been waiting for somebody to actually do that. I do not think that Cindern will this time around. He's a very conservative player, as you know. Uh, of course, yep. that, as you can see, you're able to tip in this mod, healing. Brax, but it, it doesn't actually oh. tip. You just get the satisfaction of the, the notifier. But okay, that's very nice. Very cool, uh -oh. cool feature that we added. It looks like he's going to get ganked again, potentially. See if his spidey senses are tingling this time around. He's about, you know, he's one full level behind. Curse Crown going to potentially set up the hook. Oh, that was a nice usage of his ultimate to get to the high ground. Dodging that a bit. Yaobab has absolutely no idea what is happening. <laughs> He's going <laughs> to take a Mystic Twister to the face. Get slowed really a bit. Doesn't. Cinderin didn't have another ulti charge, though, so they're going to have to kill him the old-fashioned way. He might be able to deny himself. And after all that, he does just that. Oh, this hero. Fun times. So do you think that people would max Divine Intervention over Mystic Twister? Like, 150 mana for Mystic Twister on a one-second cooldown? There's no way you can sustain that at all. I mean... It's not like it scales, though. You don't think it scales? I mean, into, I mean like, it super does scale, game? but I mean, not, like, mana-wise. Oh, right, 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 yeah. I mean, I assume... I, I figured he'd just go for, like, mana boots or something like that right off the bat, but he's going to be going for the Medallion because all the physical damage synergy. Okay. Um, I mean, that, that's something we kind of didn't really go over. The the Q, which we've seen channeled, it not only mini-stuns, it does everything, actually. It mini-stuns at the beginning, does damage over time, which is physical, and also lowers armor. It looks like he's going to get dove here. Pops his ultimate. Cause I don't think Korok knows how this hero works at all, either, right? No, no, he has absolutely no idea what's <laughs> going on. So he's going in completely blind. <laughs> that's actually good. I like that. It is good. He thinks he's leading against a, a <laughs> shitty meeple. <laughs> Yeah, that's another misconception that we saw uh, going around a little bit. The the fact that we're using Meepo's model. It's not. It, it's actually a custom model. It's just Meepo's skeleton. So the animations are the same as Meepo. He looks cool. Yeah, let's, while he has a little alone time, I'm just going to zoom in on him. This is a cat, by the way. I don't know if you're aware of that. I had absolutely no idea. Really? Doesn't look yeah. like a cat oh, to you? I see it now. Yeah. 
I mean, I guess you can see it kind of looks like a... Zoomed in. Yeah. Oh. Uses that ultimate to get the rune. And the haste keeps him at... Oh, he uses Arms the uh, conviction for the status resistance right before getting stunned. Did he? Oh, that was pretty cool. Yep. Okay. What's that scale like? So 40% status resistance at level one. I mean, if you look at the, the numbers, they're pretty crazy, but at the same time, it does need to be channeled. Yes. And it will usually be on yourself, which he is pretty squishy overall. So That definitely is a big thing that comes into... Like how you can actually use the ability, right? The whole point that it's channeling. Yeah. And if people walk away, the break distance is pretty short too, especially early on. Mm -hmm. So I want to see how much damage this uh, divine intervention with medallion does. Yeah. I actually I've seen a little bit of, with the the new buffs in place, but not in an actual game setting. So we'll see. But you're right. He, I mean, he's constantly low on mana. So that that's one thing about rushing medallion. Um, obviously, you get a little bit of mana regeneration, but Arcane Boots have to be the play, I would assume, at some point. But only time will tell for Cinderwind. I mean, right now, Korok is, as we're going to see, Party Pete get destroyed by Yao Bob, along with the, the Bloodseeker here. But because of that advantage he had mid, Korok was able to gank top. Although, after doing so, he's actually tied in levels with Cinderin, so I guess he's caught up to some degree. He's only 600 down in net worth, actually. Now, now they look at it. Oh, Shane already has a Vanguard. He's doing he's doing really well for himself. Yep, he just messaged me and he said, "Good God, what on earth does this hero do?" And I told him to stick it out. Just get level six, <laughs> get your Aghanim Scepter, and you'll feel like a really strong hero. Yeah, when people don't read the how the ulti works, it's it feels like it's the worst ulti in the game because you're popping it when you're at full HP, and it does nothing in that case, obviously. And look at this slow from Ooze. Oh my god, it's actually disgusting. That is getting nerfed, for those that are wondering. <laughs> I'll be I'll be talking about little things that'll get changed, like for for Ko. Oh, as we're gonna see mid, Curse Crown. We have Centaur support here, Yao Bob. He goes for a mini hook. Shadow Realm on top, but Lethal just used super position pretty easily to get away. And the brunt of the damage from Korok is gonna be used to take out that Centaur mid. So the sacrifice for the better good. Why did a Sporo Carp appear mid when Centaur died? Uh, so he must have had a Sporo Carp placed on him by the Parasite. So when you die, it pops a little okay. ward there. From don't ask me questions ago, right? about this here. I don't remember anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's the one here I don't give a shit about. <laughs> well, Korok able to TP out. Cinder and Liz with a little bit of HP. Oh, he gets ruptured though and is brought down. That's his second death of the game. 0-2 for our Cinder win mid. All right, so we haven't really seen Cinderin come online, and he's been spending a lot of time in the fountain respawning. But <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm looking at the numbers here, doing the math. The divine intervention, if you can actually get him with like the max slow and everything, yeah, that's a lot of damage. Yeah. I guess uh, what level does he get a second ultimate at, or level two of his ultimate at? Um, what was it? Three. Shoot. Is it ten? It might, yeah, yeah, it's 10 because I remember Cinder and complaining about not being able to choose his talent. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, top lane Korok again Sorry. in conjunction with Shane Omad will be taking out the Toxic Ooze. Just barely, though. Able to terrain walk, of course, because of that Q. Look how much damage that's doing to Korok. Yeah, that. Jesus, nine stacked on the poison. It builds up on you like uh, dying zombies. Yeah, it's, it's, and it lasts forever, too. That's the thing. Um, but one one quick note about uh, Ko, which is what Shane is playing right now. This ability, Link of Fortitude, will be replaced in the future. It's way too OP and doesn't fit his playstyle. It's like a support skill for a hero that yeah. doesn't want to play support. I see it. It's like a damage transference, right? You tank some of the damage. Yeah. I do like Ko's model, though. I know, you it's know, great. No matter where he goes, he's got the whip, he's got his cup. Yeah, he's a good he's got boy. everything he needs in life. Well, he might be in trouble now, though. Gets galed and it's getting slowed by the Q of Ooze as well. Going down slowly but surely. I assume he's going to... Oh, my God, he's might live through this, actually. There's a it's 20 the, the HP. Hide. Oh! Yep, looks like he will live through the day with 12 what? HP. <laughs> Oof. So this is kind of the... <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of the old... Huskar passive kind of tweaked a bit. 
Uh, essentially, the lower you are, the less magic damage you will take. Of course, you don't get any other buffs on top of it, so it, it is pretty ridiculous. Oh, here comes Lethal, though. Getting the nice slow onto the Bloodseeker, able Bloodseeker to help take him out. So slow. And Shane, he is pretty tanky, but... Let's see if Cinderin can do anything. Yeah, okay, well, we saw it stack up there, and it looked pretty good. Yeah, if you can catch him by surprise for sure. But the problem is he only he doesn't have any charges on his ulti right now. Does have oh, Mystic Shane Twister if he wants to use it. Oh, he does have ult. You're right. Doing a considerable amount of damage. And now Cinder has to run away. Doesn't have super position for another 18 seconds. See if he channels his E or not. Will do so. And the stun is not very long as a result. So pretty cool to see that status resistance works. Uh, somebody in chat asking if there's a spotlight on the hero that Shane is playing. Yes, there is actually. Uh, it's a very old hero. It's been tweaked a little bit since then. And of course, like I said, the W will be changed at some point. But now they're eating the, the big fat ooze. He does a lot of damage Jesus. over time. And Fudge is going to get what? destroyed. <laughs> Again, that will be nerfed a bit, I promise. Because <laughs> okay, okay. we're going to do... The way this works is we do spotlight videos and then a gameplay video afterwards for each hero. And... For Lethal, we had to buff him a bit. And for Ooze, we will be nerfing him before that video. Dyer's for sure. Tower is under attack. But Cinder now level 9. We'll be getting 10 soon. Um, so yeah, the, the crazy thing about this hero is the W has a 1 second cooldown at level 4. He's going to take a lot of damage here, actually, from the Shadow Realm. Oh, not able to dodge it. The Bramble. Oh, he does so dodge. Oh. He's going to have to channel again, it seems. Stampede is there as well. And actually, the oh, slow no, from the Ooze doing a lot of damage to Korok. Oh, he dodged it. Cinderin with a beautiful dodge. Looks like Rupture will be used, though, to help take out Ooze. As it is a 2k lead for the Dire Side at the moment. Treads? Really? Treads? Huh. What do you think about that? On I don't know. Fall? I feel like he's having mana like problems. Mana. Yeah. yeah. But th this is the beauty of seeing players play these creations because there isn't really a technically a correct way to play, right? A lot of test testing going on. Yep, for sure. But definitely unusual to say the least. He is level 10 now. Ends up going for his level 2 ult instead of the talent, which I guess not too big of a surprise. Yeah, Bob, God, there's the combo. Oh my, that's deny. third oh, deny of the game. That is rough. Very upsetting. Tell me about this Dark Willow build. I haven't really gotten to see a whole lot of mid Dark Willow. This hero just does a lot of damage. Is and, phase uh, boost normal? Cooldown. Yeah, phase boost is pretty normal. You really? right click about yeah. a million times to do low base attack time. And you also have the synergy with the Terrorize and Rupture. Yeah, we just saw that, although they did miss. Pretty scary. Another Blood Ride is placed. Oh, Cinder ends up getting silenced as a result. We'll take another Cursed Crown. Korok is really picking on Cinder in this game. He is. <laughs> but I hate there. Yeah, for sure. All right, so, you know, Lothal, he might not have the most solo kill potential, especially on heroes that are mobile, but he does have a lot of utility. Like, um, being yeah. able to set up fights just by slowing someone to, for max slow forever. Pretty nice. Oh, Shane popping his ult with full HP, so does no damage, oh, just a lot no. of particle effects sure he feels very pretty at this moment in time and he's getting completely surrounded and brought down as the radiant side do a nice job of catching up and of course parasite now running away realizing that his hero is complete dog shit <laughs> and drops to the deck uh, for those that don't know i think i mentioned earlier that hero is designed by sir action slacks and it's an abomination in every way imaginable the hero just feels like a complete like <sighs> you're playing handicapped if you have parasite on your team basically mm -hmm. he's not even six yet nope shane he tp stop gets slowed immediately Radiant's looks like cinder's gonna pull his full combo on him see how much damage he can actually do still has another charge of his ult to get another mystic twister and they're gonna be able to take him out pretty easily in the meantime <laughs> parasite <laughs> i think we've seen this before Dead again. Oh, boy. oh, but here comes Korok. Is this for real? Oh, mistimes the hoof stomp. Pops his ult. Bedlam. Dealing a little bit of damage. Nice hook onto the centaur. And Dark Willow's going to have to run, though. 
Still a lot of damage being done by the, the Radiant side as Ooze's damage over time is pretty ridiculous. Let's see, 25% XP gain for Cinderin. Okay. Has two charges of his ult, so could get a little bit aggressive if he wants. Blade Mail will definitely help counter him, though. Looks like he will... Oh, actually, he super positions into the stun. And I think with one super position left, he's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. Hook finishes on. That's a team wipe, in fact, for the dire That is. Side. That... All right. You know, Parasite, he still has dreams of getting a six, though. Does... <laughs> So I've never seen the ultimate used well. Does this change anything? Does this okay. do anything? So the old ultimate, yes. Because the old one is you take over the hero instantly for I don't know how many seconds. But now it's been nerfed and it probably needs to be buffed again. Because it's pretty shit. So the way it works is you jump inside somebody and for every two seconds you're inside them, you gain control for one second when it, whenever you want. So the maximum okay. is if you're in them for 20 seconds and you activate the skill again, you take them over for 10. But they know you're inside them, right? Okay, so they can just like TP to the fountain? Yeah, they can just TP to the fountain and you just die. <laughs> it's pretty horrible. All right. You're definitely not selling me on this hero. I, I don't want to sell you on this hero. I hate it. Looks like Centaur is going to end up dropping here. Oh, I see Lethal dropping as well on the other side. Is that Cinderin's first kill? Yes, he's one, three, and four. Of course, this so is when he starts getting after this, the solar crest. Uh, Dyer's top tower is I think it's a little attack. too early, but at some point, I think assault would be good. Okay. Um, just for that, that just minus aura. I think so. I mean, I feel like he still needs mana. But maybe I'm wrong. He's going to go for the kill on Parasite again. He's so slow. Yeah, the slow is really, really powerful. Oh, it lingers too afterwards, so huh? that's nice. Yeah, I think it's a, what is it, a four second linger? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's very strong. But I mean, that that's the thing. It, it is very strong on paper, but it, it's a single target and it's channeling. So against certain heroes, completely worthless. Yeah, definitely. Well, he you has the Solar Crest build, now. by the way, going for a blade mill afterwards. Uh, it's okay. I mean, Aghanim's, I don't think he realizes how good it is. I, I told him to buy it. Yeah, it's it's a core. Hundred percent core item. Okay. For those that don't I'm know fitting. what that does, I was talking about how useless his ult can be when he's because he has to pop it when he's low HP. It does the damage that you're missing. Um but with Ags it's based on how much health you have in like max HP. Which means it's always a good ultimate. Of course Lethal has an Ags of his own. That's something he could get as well. Gives him an extra charge of superposition. He's going to go for a solo kill onto Shane. I don't think this is going to work out too well for himself. We'll see. We'll see. Shane. Parasite's coming in. I mean, Shane has his ultimate, so. Yep. <laughs> That's the problem. Counters that to quite a high degree. Yeah, Parasite. He doesn't have ultimate for the 30 seconds, though, so I guess he used it. Doing a little bit of damage to Cinderin. He's just going to heal himself and walk away. Wet noodle fight. Yeah. I mean, it is Parasite, so. He looks scarier than he really is. He can actually just kill him right here if he wants. I'm reading his abilities and I still don't know what he does. <laughs> Not it a surprise. Like it doesn't do anything of value. It's tough, man. It's tough. He lives a tough life. I mean, when Slax creates a hero and then plays it incorrectly on, in his one of his first games, then you know something's wrong. Because he doesn't even know how the, play, the hero is supposed to be played. Looks like we're going to have some ultimates here. Terrorize will miss, but the hook finishes off Venom Master, so it's a 4v5 now. But oh, look at the damage coming to Bloodseeker. Cinderwin dealing considerable amounts himself. Nicely done. Pudge looking for some more, though. Looks like he's going to find Toxic Ooze with the Centaurs. Lots of magic damage coming in the side of the Radiant now. Another deny, though. Jesus. This man's got the deny scripts. Jesus. Uh, something I should mention, because I heard a couple people saying, why didn't you update the... Oh, remind me, I'm talking about that in a second here. It's Lethal. Okay. Parasite is inside Lethal right now. Let's see what happens, guys. Don't think it'll end well for Paras <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm sure Cinder doesn't even know what the hero does either, so nobody does. Oh, okay. Parasite has control over him now, right? Like he's moving him or no? No, is not yet. Is there an indicator for it? It'll turn, it should turn red, his health bar. Okay. I think. 
I, I actually can't tell what's going on. Is he still inside of him? He... I think so. Alright, he... I actually can't tell where he is. He's trying to figure out how to play this hero. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Shane is very low, though. Doesn't have his ultimate from the 15 seconds. Look at that. The double edge actually does nothing took, against that hero. 30 damage from it. Yeah. Oh, Cinder was ruptured. Didn't realize. This, this Bloodseeker is actually crapping all over everybody. 6k lead now for the Dyer. Not a great showing so far for Lethal. You know, he still has yet to hit his power spike, right? That sweet 25 talent. Is that enough? I don't know which one you... No. <laughs> I mean, one super... See, that's the thing. Like, the... The, <laughs> the 25 talent... I'm not saying it's not good, because that's basically getting ags, but mm -hmm. it's not, like, a crazy-ass <laughs> level 25. Even the players are flaming the, the parasite. I mean, you always have to have one really bad hero in the game. I think that's something Ice Frog said in the past. Oh, Hook's gonna miss. Let's find out what the fall is doing here. Looks like he's gonna TP top. I hear a dismember. Gets silenced though. Party Pete. This is his favorite hero. Not gonna help him through this time of triumph though. Alright. Looks like Sinner has a Mystic Twister channeled. Has no ulti charges left though. Uh oh. He's healing quite a bit. Remember, magic damage does nothing to Ko when he's low on HP. Absolutely nothing. He's gonna pop his ult. Actually not going to heal by as much as he could have. As Centaur looks to be dying very shortly. Korok is still trying to chase. We'll get the Venomancer. And the fall just runs right into the Bramble Maze. Anyway, what I was going to say is, yeah, these icons are really slick for Ooze and the fall. And then people are like, why didn't you update the, the icons for Ko and Parasite? Because that's intended. I want those icons. They're awesome. They look good. I can't tell what absorption is because of the cooldown, but everything else looks it's real It's a nice. sponge. <laughs> oh. The idea is you're just you're you're collecting all the damage, you know, like a sponge. Okay. And it distributing even kind of it looks out. like a, a sponge effect when the ult comes out. Yeah. Intended, Very my cool. friend. And then you have Link just you know, there. Yeah, it's Link. Everybody loves Link. All right. All right, Lethal doing his full combo. It's actually dealing a lot of damage. Ko does not have his ultimate, so he's going to drop here. Remember, physical damage is really good against that hero because he's really only good against the magical. And, so I mean, blade mail was, against Lethal is not good, I would say. Yeah, I was thinking in the, in the beginning, you know, it might be kind of cool because you can just stand on the twister, but he just replaces it with an illusion every single time. Yeah, exactly. Your dog is crying. Brax. Oh, I'll be right back. We need to go out. Poor dog. Looks like the fall. Gonna get eaten here, but it's gonna get canceled. It's gonna heal himself. And he's actually gonna die. <laughs> he is just running out of these charges so fast. And Bramble. Not gonna catch anybody. Centaur's gonna dodge the Shadow Realm. Terrorize. Will be used, but. Is he actually going to chase this Korok? You got some testicles, my friend. He has a Maelstrom as well, so going for the right-click build. Might be in some trouble, though. He's surrounded by enemies. Is this the throw we were looking for? It looks like it might be. Unfortunately, the gold goes to Centaur and not to Cinderwin, who is going Lincolns. So that'll prevent the rupture, probably the big one he's looking for. By the way, anybody have questions in chat? Because we are streaming live right now uh just tag my name tag dota cinema and i'll answer if it's applicable man bloodseeker already has aganum scepter i don't know what the fuck this is though why do you have a mech uh oh he's going for the greaves what's this for i have never seen mech on this hero have you no definitely not that's the beauty of this mod brax <laughs> you can see great items that you've never <laughs> seen before for no reason at all. It's like a flashback to the old days of Dota when you could just play whatever you wanted for fun. <laughs> you know? Yeah, pretty much. All right, we're going to see the combo on Shane again. He does have absorption. Remember that nice, juicy sponge? He gets silenced uh -oh. in the last second, though. Too greedy, my friend. So he will be the first to die in this engagement. Looks like Skyrath will be next. They do pop the shrine. Terrorize on a couple of heroes into the hook. Mmm. Dirty. 
Stampede Where's actually Cinder could work been? against them. What's that? Where's Cinder in bin? Where's his team fight contribution? Well, he got terrorized and then Centaur stampeded him. <laughs> so he ran very oh. far away. Fortunately for him, he was not ruptured. No, not quite. Did he ult? Yeah, he, oh, did. he yeah. was in the hall. Ah, okay. I mean, the, one of the beauties of this ult is just being able to blink and dodge stuff. Very cool. He's on the high ground right now. Pudge is... <laughs> He's going real deep. Nice, uh -oh. nice. Uh-oh. Cinder went. Wait, oh. do they know? They might now. Oh, Hook misses, though. Cinder really wants this. I don't think he's going to find it. Do you think Blink would be good on Lothal? So you can, like, yes, Blink in, slow... Okay, yeah. That's what I was thinking, because it's really hard to walk up to somebody in the middle of a fight and just use your Divine Intervention without mm -hmm. using your ult in the beginning to gap close. Yeah. Yeah, so for people that have played this mod and you haven't, uh, there are recommended items for the heroes that you play, but you do have to disable Dota Plus to see them. <laughs> it's in the options to disable Dota Plus. Unfortunately, there's no workaround for us at the moment. But yeah, Blink, I think, is 100% core. Um, I would have said Mana Boots is core, but I mean, he actually hasn't really been running out of mana, it feels like, in the mid game. Yeah, he's now. making it work. Solarcraft and the Perseverance is definitely helping. Under attack. All right, I see a lot of questions in chat asking about what are the interactions like with Parasite Ult and this, Parasite Ult and that. Let's refrain from those questions because I don't know. Because the hero <laughs> is impossible to balance. He has a million bugs in the game. Let's just forget he's in the game, guys. How about that? The hero actually just breaks the game. His concept breaks everything. Uh, somebody's asking, how many heroes do you want to add to this mod? Uh, unlimited. Like, we have, obviously, all the, the heroes that are in the game right now for Dota 2. Uh, and there's no reason not to just keep adding them. I don't see... As long as the heroes are fun to play, I think that's the main thing that I'm looking for. I'm not looking for complex heroes. I want heroes that are just genuinely fun. Parasite being the exception, of course. And there has to be that one exception, right? The techies, basically. Yeah, and it had to be the first one as well. I mean, that, that's the thing about Lothal. People say their first impression is that he's super complicated, but if you really play him, you don't need to micro his illusions. So it, I feel like the ceiling is not... It can be high, but the floor is high as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I definitely agree. It's also the way his abilities work together. You have to, like, chain him and combo him, and you have different situations for mm -hmm. each thing. It makes it different and fun to play, like, in every single fight. Like, I yeah. really like the idea. He might not be that strong as we are currently seeing, but, you know, this could be an off game as well. You don't know. I mean, one so thing he's so definitely so very good at is farming. No doubt about it. He's going to be healing his teammate. Not going to be enough to that hook, though. Let's see if he can go on top of Shane. Shane still has absorption. So you do have to keep that in mind. It looks like he is actually going for Ags now. Did you message him again? No, I didn't actually. He, his, <laughs> the gears in his brain just started turning. Wow. What a beautiful Irishman. All right, Lethal Look, was trying to heal his teammate again, but to no avail. We'll be going top of Shane now. The Blade Mail's popped along with that ultimate. Not really going to do that much for him. It looks like Centaur's coming on the side. But Korok coming in for the kill. Will take out Cinder again. And Korok does fall to the double edge at the last moment, though. And I think uh, Shane is getting the Aghanim Scepter delivered to him right now. Unfortunately for Centaur, I do believe this is where you die. Most does the uh, cooldown for Ko's ultimate go down with Ags? No. Okay, so it's still quite a long cooldown. I'm pretty sure. Did it go down? Okay. No. Nope. Okay. Yeah. It, it's the same. The, the effect you get is just way too overpowered, I think, to... So look at this okay. shield. This will be removed from the game soon. This guy's taking no damage at all from this shield. Shane's actually dying, absorbing all the damage for him. Yeah, but you, this you is like... You can't even move. What is this? <laughs> the, uh, well, the slime trail. It's, slime trail. It's actually undying zombies. It stacks. Yeah. And then you pop those uh, oozlings, and that slow stacks as well. So you can easily get like 100 <laughs> move speed Good God. on everybody. Yeah, it's, it's very dirty. Oh, God. Parasite. At least we might see some throws here. This is like a wasted item. Dagon. So the original... And I'm pretty sure this doesn't work. But this is the idea of the hero, right? You put down these pods. They eventually become Sporocarps. And in theory, you can cast items globally onto Sporocarps. So 
Dagon was supposed to work globally if somebody's next to one of those things, like one of these up here. Don't think it works, though. Very bad. Is item. that a bug or a feature? Feature. I don't I don't care about this hero anymore. I, I don't know how to explain right. that any further for everybody. <laughs> don't care about it. All right. Going on top of Shane again. Does have absorption. Now, this is not the target you want to go for. Unless you have everybody on your team ready to go. Yeah, Bob. He's going to get stunned. See if they can take out this big behemoth or not. He gets silenced as well. Stampede is used. More Mystic Twisters being placed. He's going to eat his way through it, and it's just not a lot of damage. But nice healing onto Centaur. But oh as you God, can see, Ko's cold. ult is doing so much damage. Takes out Centaur in the end. Yaobob will finally drop. No deny for him in sight. Viscous Ooze will be trying to get some counter kills here, but the blood. This is a really good Bloodseeker game. <laughs> a really good Bloodseeker <laughs> game. Sinner is going to get silenced, and I believe that he will die now as well. There's no second charge of rupture, but it doesn't seem to matter very much as he drops to the deck. Wow. Winning a game with Parasite on your team. <laughs> this feels so good. Yeah, it's it's a tough feat, no doubt about it. And I think, uh, I mean, this is one of those games that Lothal maybe not having the best of games, but you can see that he can be powerful, just not against this lineup, perhaps. Um, you know, it would be crazy if the Mystic Twister actually had the uh, the max health DPS part, because I'm watching these Mystic Twisters at 30 minutes in the game, mm -hmm. and nobody takes any damage in the middle. Did he take the talent for that? Oh, he did take the yeah, 30 he DPS. Yeah, plus 30 damage, mm. yeah. I don't know, that seems really OP. Because that, that just does. feels like you're putting so much into the W then. You know? That is true. I like the risk-reward factor of having his single target skill that's not the easiest to pull off be the one that does a lot of scaling damage. Oh, they're diving. Bloodrite goes off. Shane absorbing a lot of that damage thanks to that W of his. Let's see if they Shane can throw. Shane has 20 seconds for his ultimate. I don't think he's going to make it, my friend. No, there's no way. As long as they realize that not to do magic damage to him. Oh, is he going to die in Fountain? <sighs> that Oozling actually worked against his Shadow Realm. That's a feature. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hmm. So this 20 talent will fall is really interesting. The uh, invisibility after yeah. you... Super position. That sounds really cool. You know, that makes your hero even more loose if you already have these illusions and you make these fights really crazy and chaotic. Oh, it's really cool. I feel like he should be going at. He's going for Atos. I really don't like this item on this hero. It sounds like it's good, but I mean, we'll see, I guess. It sounds like something you already have, basically. Yeah. You know, you've already got that ability. I mean, how much value do you put in having that extra charge? Is it really that big of a deal? I mean, he's going for this right now. Oh, Terrorize is there. Oh, boy. Sindarin taking massive amounts of damage. Super positions up to the high ground. Oh, it gets stunned. Oh, it looks like he's going to get taken over here for a second. Let's see how long it lasts. He's in Viz right now. He's inside, right? Yeah, he's definitely inside. Yeah, he inside. is inside. Okay, he just popped out. <laughs> All right. Stampede. Looks like he'll be okay. Parasite leaves much to be desired. I mean, it's it sounds cool that you can take over heroes, but uh, in practice, yeah. I think somebody was asking if you could just TP back to base. Yes, absolutely you can. But he can activate to take over anytime he wants, so that shouldn't really happen. Actually. Okay, so that's like a, a way to force him out, basically. Yeah. Oh, attack. Cinderwin able to take out Parasite. That's like the only hero he can kill right now. Top tower has One rupture absorbed. I mean, we'll see. If he can channel... So the thing about these channeling skills that uh, is maybe not the most obvious thing... That shouldn't be obvious at all, actually. He's going to supervision up to avoid the blood, right? Shane, oh boy. I think he's going to dive. Pretty sure he's going to dive here. He's in. Uh, you can actually... So these are all channeled for ten, up to 10 seconds. 
Actually, we'll hold that thought here for a moment. A lot of Mystic Twisters being placed, but there is the Cole ult dealing so much damage. Lethal can do nothing but run away as that Blood Rite is really strong against this hero. That's probably the biggest counter in this particular game to Cinderin, I would say at least. Trying to chase Bloodseeker. <laughs> is this enough? No, he's got... Oh, well, maybe. No. Oof. 150 HP. Well, this might... Oh, another... Another pipe? What? How? Oh, Cinder's going for this, though. Gets off the Q, but Bloodseeker is way too fast. And now Cinder might fall. Only has that one super position to work with. But anyway, what I was saying, you can you can channel these for up to 10 seconds, but if you use your ult at like right before it's done channeling, it'll just continue channeling for the, it'll start over essentially. So you can technically do it for like 19 seconds. Okay. Very unrealistic though, but. Yeah, I mean, at mean. first that was not intended, but he could use all the help he could get. He gets destroyed. Good Lord. Good Lord. And Korok is, what's his score this game? He is 17 and four. Jesus. He's on it. Parasite on the other hand is O and 15. <laughs> you know, they balance out with each other. No big deal. Yeah, it's only a 10, I say only a 10K lead. I thought this would be like 25K at this point. Definitely feels like it with a 20 kill Bloodseeker. Mm hmm. Yeah, the Bloodseeker has been a real pain in the ass for the fall, no doubt. What has Ooze done this game? Has he been eating items? He must have, yeah. So he's starting to get lots of items. That's what this hero is good for. Scaling into the late game, in theory. Shane, I think he can go into the fountain and use his ulti and kill two of these guys. If he really wants to. I think to. he's slowly waddling in. He'll get there. Double rupture. <laughs> Does that work, by the way? I no, doubt it. No, it doesn't. Shane, just ult, man. You will actually kill them. You will literally kill them in fountain. Not, not if there's more than two, though. All right, here we go. The throws will commence. Pudge gets the hook off. <laughs> oh, goodness, the damage. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Shane's here does get pretty huge. This is not even close to as big as it can get, though. Well, that's all. You can see some damage doing, being done from the Mystic Twister. And Shane, already used that ult, so we'll drop as a result. So double kill. Nice de fountain defense by the Radiant. Solid, solid. Centaur is being taken over by Parasite. He hasn't clicked it yet, though. He will die in a second once he pops out. <laughs> he will oh, die. Oh, God, look at all the ooze. He will die. Slime trail. <laughs> Just a matter of time. I don't think he can stay in indefinitely. I could be wrong about that. Maybe he can. God, this hero's so stupid. I'm about to read the skill. 60 read seconds. Loud. Oh, okay. It's, it's very long. <laughs> Up to 60 seconds inside. So you can force your enemy to stay in a fountain for 60 seconds, guys. That's value, actually. Just sitting there. You know, Centaur just wants to sit in the fountain now. <laughs> He's you getting know, bored. He almost wants to walk out. Something you can do to get him out, because he does take damage based on how much damage you're taking. You can just double edge a, bu a bunch of times oh. and actually kill him. Oh, here we go. He's going to pop his ult, though, and die shortly after. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had a good run. All right, just like that, it's only a 4K lead. Gracious. All right. Oh, my God. He got the 25 talent on, on uh, Dark Willow. 200 attack speed. attack speed. Pretty crazy. So he's he's going to die, though. Yes, he's dead. <laughs> All right. Feeding the gold to Roche. Let's see if Cinder wants to do anything about this. He has his Atos now. Let's see if he uses it. All right. Gets off the Solar Crest as well. Just clipping him with that Mystic Twister. I mean, that is that is a lot of minus armor. So that is for sure. That's, that's a lot of gold going to the Skywrath Mage. Poor Cinderwin, man. Is under Only three kills for his name. Wait, but so Shane killed the ooze without using his ult. Okay, the pudge is in. I guess he just sat in blade mill with his uh Yeah. With his his thing yeah. In the slime trail. So once uh 
I don't see how Dyer can lose once Shane gets his 25 talent if he goes for the max creeps. You will see him as big as towers in a minute here. Oh, well, they're actually going to uh -oh, dive Parasite. onto Parasuto. He will drop. Three are actually dead for quite a while. The Scotty on Nurbert is dealing, doing, or is doing so much work. And the Mystic Twister is going to be another addition to that kill. Shane's going to jump in. He thinks he's invincible. Shane, he got silenced initially, pops his ult, dealing a lot of damage, but Lothal doesn't seem to give a shit. Continuing to slow. There's the silence from Skyrath Mage. He's going to have more Mystic Twisters to go. And that is another. Did they just throw the game? He's gonna have to buy back now. <laughs> <They might have. laughs> Tier three drops. I mean, Ko is now pretty useless without his ult. All he can do is eat so, creeps. Ko's ultimate splits between all the targets, right? Yes. The more targets, oh, the worse the it is. Thing. Yeah. It is a sponge after all, my friend. All right, and all of a sudden, the radiant have taken a giant lead. I don't understand what's going on. Lothal continuing to channel absolutely nothing. Shane doesn't want to walk in there. Thinking twice about it, at least. Crimson Guard has popped. Cinder and... Oh, he dodges the hook. Mmm, tasty. And looks like they get a full set of racks in the mid lane. <laughs> what? I don't understand what's going on. Oh, Parasite's in Lothal now. This is when things get uh -oh. crazy. He's walking back. He's out. Oh. All right. All right. Nothing happened. Okay. Well done. He does have a spore inside him, though. So he's going to get oh, stunned. Very dagged. Nice. Oh, he's going to get eaten. Oh, no. Cinderwin. He can go invis, but there is a blood seeker. Gets ruptured, and they know where he is. Super dead. Does have buyback, though. All right. He's going to need it. Excellent. Excellent. This game is taking a turn for the better, I have to say. Does so, BKB block, block Ooze's trail? Yes, it should at least. Unless it's a yeah, bug. Yeah, it says magical damage. I mean, Ooze is pretty fat, man. I don't know what you buy in this hero, but he has a lot of items. He is very farmed, actually. And Venomancer, we barely talked about. He's mega farmed. He's the top net worth in the game, in fact. How did that happen? I don't know. Nurbert is really carrying this game for Cinderin. I, I, I know Syndrome's level 25, but he's still waiting to hit that power spike. <laughs> I, I don't know when it happens, but it's, it's, it's inevitable. Uh, Maybe it's level 30. <laughs> Maybe the hero should have extra five levels to work with. Uh, that's one way to balance the hero, just give him more levels. So that's another thing we should mention. We don't claim that any of these heroes are balanced. I mean, none of them are just going to, like, break the game. At least that's not the intention. Uh, and Lothal can definitely be very good in certain games. We're just trying to figure out what those games are, you know? It's hard. But the cool thing is we have so much time. We can, we're can we going to be putting in one hero a week for the foreseeable future, along with some items here and there, Is once that gets fixed. Because right now... Uh, Dota Plus does not allow us to put new items in the game, or else it crashes servers. There's a big no-no. Did you just get so a it's second hex? Dota Plus. Yes. Okay. I see. All right. Look how much gold oh, uh, the, Ooze has. Shane now. got the movement speed, by the way. Oh, you idiot! Oh, what an idiot! Come on, Shane. Shane, Shane, Shane. That is a really bad. I mean, I know he was getting slowed a lot, but look at him—he's still slow. Well, he just threw the game with his talent choice as well, it seems. <laughs> it needs to be an item to reset talents. Uh, Parasite cannot TP when he takes over because he can't use items for the hero. He can only use abilities. Radiant's for the person asking in the chat. Oh, you know, speaking of Parasite, he got Fungal Pod damage. I wasn't aware Fungal Pod did any damage <laughs> to the <laughs> Yeah, it, it's damage over time. It's not like bursts or anything. But maybe we should just make it burst at this point. All right. Looks like we have the Centaur ult. Nice hoof stomp onto two, along with the Veno ult being used in conjunction. Lots of Mystic Twisters being placed in random locations by Cinderin. By the way, he went Deso. Yeah, I saw that. And we'll see how this works. Lots of minus armor on this team. I mean, they definitely don't want more magic damage, I suppose, but... We'll see how this works. Use superposition to get outside the blood right again. Hook will miss. 
There's the channeling of the heal and status resistance towards Centaur. Will that be enough to actually save him? Doesn't look like it. The rupture, among other spells being used to take him out. Uh-oh, Cinder's in a lot of trouble now. He's taking tons of damage from Dark Willow. Korok destroys him, but Venomancer, again, just being completely ignored in this oh, game. Herbert. Oh, Shane, he's got his ult. He wants to use it. Oh! Oh, run away! But getting kited as per norm, will attempt to TP out. Should be fine. <laughs> he just healed so much health. <laughs> Uh-oh, rupture on... Who, who did he just rupture? Oh, it was the... Yeah, it was the Lincolns. All right. Nice hook there. He's going to have to buy back on the Venomancer now. 11k lead for the Radiant. Remember, they do have the mid racks advantage. Dyer's Ancient is under attack. And they're going to have to go defend for now. Shane, imagine that he has 4,700 HP now, right? Mm -hmm. So with 15 extra creeps, what is that? 15 times 4, that's 60 strength he's giving up. Oh, wow. 60 strength. That's a shit ton of health. And that, and with Ags, you're basically doing that much damage. Like, right now, he will do 4,700 damage with his ult. Okay. He so messed up big time. 60 strength. How much HP is that, roughly? Can you do the math? It's like 1,600. So he'd be doing, like, uh, 6,300 something magic damage. I've actually never seen anybody take the movement. I, I can't stop talking about this, Brax. 75 <laughs> movement speed. Come on. Had to be you know, it That's how you know you have to change the other talent. <laughs> yeah, true. Super that is definitely true. Can Underlord, Caudal, or Chen TP hero taken over by Parasite? I mean, technically, I guess that's probably possible. I'm uh, another function that was put in for the... I love how all the questions are... Fucking parasite related. Uh, <laughs> Everyone loves parasite. So oh. when you when you take over here, you can all chat as them. I should probably let them know that. Oh, that when is one of the best features. Hero. You gotta disguise yourself. So I have another parasite related question. Of course you do. Hold if, on, we have to hold uh, that thought, my friend Pudge. Getting slowed pops the BKB. Remember, a lot of this damage is physical from. Cinderwin. I can't even find where he is. There he is. Nice hook onto... I don't know who that was. Actually, it's very messy. Bramble Maze coming into play. Shane getting at half HP. Still has his ult available. Terrorize is used. He gets silenced, though. If they can kill Shane, this would be a huge deal. He gets stunned by the hook stomp, and they will take out the Behemoth Co. And that's three dead in this fight. The Radiant team rallying behind Cinderin's lack of damage. <laughs> Everyone's so tanky in this fight. Yeah. They give this 4,000 health to ooze. <laughs> Nobody dies. All right, what was really your question? Oh, so if I use an ability, like if I'm Parasite and I took over Centaur and I Stampede, does it Stampede my entire team? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It should, yeah. Well, actually, I can't. Okay. Can you use their ults, actually? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I don't know. I think you can use their ult, but it doesn't put it on cooldown. Or at least that's not how it's supposed to. Oh, okay, okay. But you can still... So you get two I... stampedes, one for each team, essentially. Okay. That's how it's supposed to work. Don't quote me. Jumps inside party, right. Pete. Pops his ultimate on not a whole lot. Wait, and... what happened? Parasite denied himself. Yeah, th there's some bugs with that, too. I don't know how that works. Exactly. Nobody oh, cares. It slacks his hero. Mid lane, though. And I have to focus on this little fall. And who is that? That is the centaur taking almost no damage from Pudge. Getting healed. And fall. He's just walking around. All right, is he actually going to go for this? Lotus Orb is applied. Hook will miss. Who died? That was the Bloodseeker finally dying in the jungle. All right. And Fall's just going to push. I mean, they're dead for quite a while. Two people have buybacks, though. I really don't like this Deso. I don't think I've seen them use it to attack anyone once before using his abilities. Yeah. Like, it's just not it's very practical. It's too hard to use. Yeah. Oh, Stampede. He's going to try to get better position here. As there was, was a buyback on the Parasite. Dark Willow dealing so much freaking damage. Has a Moon Shard on top of everything else. Venom ult. That is going to be a massive one. But there's a Terrorize onto two. 
Cinderin does have his E available to heal if need be. We'll be using it onto Centaur. He doesn't get stunned as a result. And Korok is getting absolutely decimated. Buyback by Parasite. I know he gives a shit. Yalbob getting completely kited. Here comes Shane. He's going to pop that ult shortly, but there's a million units. We'll see how much damage he actually does in the end. The Blade Mail's popped as well. Cinderin taking the brunt of it. He will be taken over as well. He's going to try to go to the fountain. He's actually cutting. Bring him in. Bring him he really in. wants to. Let's see. He's all going right, in. All right. Cinderin has his ult, though. <laughs> He's going to oh, turn it right parasite. around onto Parasite. God damn it, Parasite. What a game. Wow, we. <laughs> uh, I. Even though I know the Dire threw, I'm still surprised they found a way to lose that game. I'm it very looked surprised. Unlosable. It really did. Very impressive play by Lethal and the rest of the Radiant team. Pretty much carried by Venomancer, I want to say. Um, oh, shoot. I can't. Okay, good. I just want to see what Ooze actually ended up with. So he ate his items and bought a lot of the same ones. Uh, got rid of the Sheepstick, though. So he ended up with a Heart, AC, Shiva's, Octarine, and Blade Mail. What did Lethal end up with? I mean, the same items we saw the whole game. So, All right. I'm going to tell Cinderwin to come in our chat here nice the post game we'll, interview we'll have a post game interview so what were, what were your thoughts overall about this hero he definitely feels like okay he's really good against certain heroes and really bad against certain heroes mm -hmm. like there are some melee heroes that want to like stake in your face forever like centaur that uh not center like bristleback for example and then they just get all their armor shredded pretty much right right and they can't actually leave but um for these heroes that are super mobile like when stampede comes out for example all your links just break and then the uh twisters alone in fights don't feel like they do that much it feels like in the late game it's all about you know keeping these people at 100 move speed reducing their armor it's more supporting towards the end i would say so hello. oh hello cinder and how are you hi uh, I'm feeling weird. Actually. Tell me, tell me what you're thinking. Um, so first of all, there were some really interesting things happening in that game. With, I hate uh, your item build. Just want to say thank that you. first. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, we will get to that because I'm still not sure how to play the hero. Um, so our ooze is that what it's called? The viscous yeah. ooze is that? What mm -hmm. it, yeah. We uh we we came up with this interesting idea of when he was really rich and used his ult, he just bought refresh orb and did it again. Yes, um, that is a bug. He, Thank you for abusing got, it. He got really rich. Oh, okay. Well, nobody told us we couldn't do no, it. No, no, no. So I'm just kidding. It. It's not a bug, but uh, it's actually a feature that I think I want to make into a bug because it's yeah. it's way too good. I think that should be. Right. Yeah. So, well, as far as this hero goes, so this was the first time I played it since the first spell starts dealing percentage based damage. Mm -hmm. And you can definitely feel it, but the problem is that a lot of heroes that you're facing, if your link breaks, you actually can't really do that much. So somebody right. suggested I try to buy Atos. I think you might have to buy that item really early, actually, to make sure that the enemy heroes stay in place. I thought the slow was strong enough, but unless you start casting it in melee range, if you cast it from like a bit of range, they can actually break it before it starts being strong. Mm -hmm. Then. Without that spell, you don't deal enough damage. Okay, that makes more so. sense. Because originally, when we started testing it out with, um, with the Atos, it it felt very underwhelming. But that was before the buff to Q, where it did damage. So now yes. with that damage, it that makes a lot more sense. But I like the I idea of keeping the damage the same on Q because it needs to be a risk reward, right? Like the W, you can constantly cast. I don't think that should ever have the HP percentage damage. That'd be way too good. The Q, it's a bit yeah. of a risk. Like it's it's harder to accomplish. Um, but yeah, I think I agree with that. The Atos may be a little early. I was surprised you didn't go for mana boost. Did you not find you had uh, mana problems at all mm, in the early game? I had game? Bottle Wand, and yeah, in the super early game I did, but that was because I didn't get Bottle first, and then I regretted and bought a bottle. I see, okay. In this game mode, there's six runes every two minutes, so you will get runes if you play for it. Yeah, that's right. So that's a bug. That's that a I'm, feature, right? That that's originally a bug that we can't fix. That the runes spawn more often, but I want to keep it actually because uh, it's it just more fun nice for people mode. to have. It's it's almost it's not exactly turbo mode, but it's like halfway to it in some ways. A lot more gold influx for everybody. Okay, what else? Yeah. Um. 
I felt that um, in the very early stages, I think the hero is just too weak until it's level 10. Like, when you only have one ulti clone, you can't really chain things. So your first guy starts channeling the slow, and then you ult. And then your second mm -hmm. guy has the choice between casting Twister or attacking. And in either case, it's really underwhelming. So I actually stood AFK mid until I was level 10 and farmed, because I didn't feel like going to fight at all. <clears throat> okay. Um, so maybe maybe there's a way of encouraging that in some way. It's tricky, though, with this. Uh... Mm. As far as the values go, I think he might also... It, I still felt like I did very little damage in the game, even with a Solar Crest and chaining all my stuff. But I was also playing against some really tanky heroes, right? Like that Ko guy seems super tanky. Yeah, that's a hero Pudge. that I think... Um, like your hero, it, it it doesn't like just kill somebody immediately. It's not like a co-op that comes in and bursts you down. It's, it's damage mm -hmm. over time, and Ko is... Although you do physical damage, which is really good against Ko, because he's basically all about receiving magical very efficiently... Um, like once he gets low, he can just pop his ult and he just gets back to full HP. So your hero isn't particularly great against him. Um, but there wasn't any like, how did the mid matchup versus Dark Willow feel? It was Korok, so obviously he's, obviously he's very good. But um, like it's not like a Queen of Pain that can just blink out of your channels. This hero is the weakest laner in the whole game. Lethal or Dark Willow? Lethal. Lethal is the weakest laner in the whole game. In the whole game. Yes, what does weaker that mean? than any other Dota hero, including Techies in lane. I think he's just too, really? he just doesn't he doesn't do anything in lane, huh. and that's how the hero is. Because you know you have to commit to a channel in order to deal any damage. You're a melee right click int hero with bad base stats. I have 45 base damage, so I have to buy Quelling Blade and a Stout to begin with, or I just die to harass. And then when I'm level three, I can if I go one one zero build, I can. Channel is slow with the first one and jump with the second one and start hitting with it. But there's very specific mm -hmm. matchups that um, that I can do stuff in. Most of the time, I would say you're not favored. So I think... I just... Oh, go ahead, Brick. Can I say something real quick? I just want to say, I played it before the, uh, the Q did max percent health damage. And I think that build where maxing Q is, is better than maxing W. So before that was in, I maxed W because it obviously did damage. Mm -hmm. And... I laned against a melee hero, and they actually couldn't walk in to, like, deny. Do you know what I mean? Like, they couldn't even, like, get in range to, like, aggro the creeps back or anything. And it felt like I was never going to kill this guy, but at the same time, he didn't want to lean me. I know yeah, when you when you maxed your second spell first against a melee hero. Yes, yes. I could definitely see that being a strategy, like, where you go that first, and you just use it on every creep wave, like a Midnight Pulse, basically. Yep. I, I can agree with that being cool. It's just, there's very few matchups like that, right? The enemy needs to not oh, have yeah. a silence, not have a stun, and be melee. It's like a handful no of heroes mobility. that fit that criteria. Yep. That was another thing in this game, Shannon, that I realized. Because when we did the testing, right? And I had this, I even thought about this just theory crafting the hero in general. Mm -hmm. um, is if you're playing against an enemy lineup that has some sort of AoE silence or AoE stun, it's actually really difficult. You need to, your hero's concept is all about building damage up over time and sustaining the channels. But there's so many things that can break your channels. Like there were two fights or something where I start, I start channeling all my spells correctly, and I just get hit by a terrorize, and I'm just useless yeah. after that. Actually, terrorize was all really of good, my channels and, break. Uh, blood right was very annoying for you. I could tell the whole game. Blood right. Uh, if I was playing against silencer, I would feel miserable the whole game. Yeah. Because I, if he doesn't cast global, I actually just can't really commit. Because isn't there when something I use to be said all my channels, for kind of like it, let's say there is a silencer, and it feels like that way of playing him is almost just unplayable is there mm -hmm. any like right click build that could potentially be viable like I using so. your illusions that's... and doing something crazy yeah. like that that's what i started transitioning into late game i actually think i should have planned for it earlier you know i go for the solar crest and maybe the atos and then you start building carry the tricky part again is your illusions are what is it the 20 talent is does it make them take 100 percent damage or 200 percent damage it goes down from 200 to 100, so it becomes like you're basically a hero as far as incoming it's damage. It's like Meepo, your illusions. Uh, Meepo. Well, they don't, do, they don't do full damage, though. I no, but think. they take... Okay, yeah, yeah, I got you. They take um, as much damage as a hero would, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the way to go with this hero late game. If you want to become... Interesting. If okay. you want to remain a core, you have to go physical build because your spells... There's so many counters, right? Like if they have BKBs or Lincolns or mm -hmm. uh, just even armor items makes it takes so long before you pierce and if they get out of your 
your chain, you you kind of don't deal enough damage. So I think you probably have to... It's a bit weird though, right? Like you take this channeling hero and you play channeling and then the late game you're like, my channels aren't good anymore, so you just right click. That feels a bit awkward in a way, Yeah. maybe. Yeah, and maybe no, you I use one of them to cast the first spell and then the other three will just right click when you slow them. Maybe you could do that with a hex. You can play like a pseudo Meepo. So aside from the lack of damage in the, I guess, the late game, how, was the hero, from your perspective, fun to play? Because I was telling the stream and people that are going to be watching on YouTube, the, the one thing that I definitely want to accomplish in terms of bringing new heroes in, more than anything, more than balance, more than uh, new mechanics or anything like that, I want the heroes to be fun to play. That's the most important thing. Because I feel like, like Pango is a perfect example of a hero that I find to be extremely fun. And it makes me realize that there's so many heroes that I actually don't find fun in Dota. <laughs> they're good, mm -hmm. but they're not fun. You know what I mean? So yeah. what did you feel in that respect for Lethal? Uh, I think it's fun, but I, at the same time, I think it's also very, um, how to say it, for the average player, I think it's very difficult to get the fun part out of it because it's very intensive in a way in the fights like you need to juggle multiple things especially when you get items so mm -hmm. i think it's the type of hero that hello he just muted you just muted yourself on team speak my friend he just oh. left you hanging oops sorry i had some dust on my keyboard and i touched my mute key <laughs> nice. um no so what, what what when did i cut off so juggling items is yeah, maybe okay. high skill cap or whatever. Yeah, I think it's a really high skill cap hero that has a lot going on. I think it's fun. It's I it might need some sort of still a tweak that just makes it easier to get that feeling of success in the game. Because I had a couple of moments in this game where I was like, Wow, I'm doing a lot and then I had a lot of moments where I was like, Okay, I just did nothing and I used mm -hmm. all my stuff. Yeah. And, of course, that's a, like a burden of not having the experience on the hero, but it also seems very, very countered by specific things that you can't really, you can't really circumvene it in the same way that many other Dota heroes can. Because, mm -hmm. again, you're full channeling, right? So, you can't... Yeah. What's, an, what's a good example? Let's say Enigma versus Silencer, right? If you're playing the Enigma, you just accept, okay, in this game, it's really hard for me to use Black Hole because there's a global. Um, but you have other but you, skills you can use. You have other easily. skills and you have other itemization. You're like, I'll play on Malefice, I'll play on Conversion, I'll split push, I'll get off a good Midnight Pulse. Mm -hmm. This hero is like, everything you cast is a channel. So if it gets broken, you have nothing left. So well, maybe I, you need to compensate I with like itemization like, as well. I feel like you could split push pretty easily with this hero, though. I mean, if they're gonna, oh, for sure. If they're going to freaking global silence for you to stop split pushing, that's pretty good. <laughs> they're not going to do that, I think. Uh, but maybe, again, maybe you need to try to... It's just, it's very tempting when you look at the hero and you see all these channels to be like, okay, how do I itemize to make all my channeling yeah. work? Well, that, maybe... that's definitely the initial impression, right? That's how you build. But uh, I, I kind of want to you... see how the community kind of like evolves this to maybe try some yeah. new stuff. I think after playing it, when you try it, I think you need to rely a bit less on that perfect channeling combo and you just use the individual channels to force reactions from the enemy and then you build carry style. I mm -hmm. think that's a really good approach. Okay. Because all of the spells are strong, right? Like, you can't just ignore that they're there. If you're caught by the Q, you have to run out. If You can't stand in these twisters. So you just use an illusion to cast the spells. Uh, the third spell was super useful, by the way. I'm not sure if you noticed, but uh, against Dark Willow, for example, every time he tried to stun me, when the stun was about to hit, I just started channeling my yeah. my third spell, and the stun was like half a second. So that was really useful. It's like, all the spells are have good applications and are fun to use. It's just, yeah, again, the chaining is a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. to accomplish. Okay. Uh, any... maybe, maybe if one spell wasn't channeling, maybe you replace one of them with a non-channel. They have like an active spell that isn't as conditional. Hmm. That could be a thing. But this is the first time I play it 5 on 5. We only tested it one on one, you and me a bit, and that's yeah, obviously very that different than normal Dota. So, so that, that's another thing that I think, I'm not saying this is the case for you necessarily, because obviously you know what you're talking about, but uh, like a lot of initial impressions of hero concepts, they're like, oh, this hero is broken, or the, oh, this hero is terrible. You don't really know until you get a large sample size of games. That's yes. the thing that you can't be too trigger happy on changes. Um, and of course, if we're going to come out with a new hero, they're probably going to be a little bit OP at the very least, if not really OP, because <laughs> we don't want them to feel like absolute pieces of shit. Lethal, 
I thought was a little underpowered today before he made this update, and maybe he's still underpowered. I don't know, but we haven't really seen enough games to really know, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Obviously, tweaks can still be made, but... Um, okay. Uh, for I guess that's pretty much it for the fall. Um, Brax, unless you have any final words about the hero. I still have no idea what to buy on this hero. Yeah. Like there's so many different things you can do with items. Like you can buy blink so you can get melee range and then you can land the Q so they're slowed forever. But that's also very situational against people with mobility abilities, of course. And then there's like the Atos thing. And then there's all the negative armor synergy. I really have no idea what to do, but the hero looks fun. And I like that all the skills have so many different applications that you have to like really think about what you want to use in every single fight. It's pretty cool. It reminds me of uh, of Meepo. Oh my! <laughs> like Meep Meepo Oracle, kind of. Yeah. Like with Oracle, you need to it, it, these spells aren't like double edged like Oracles are, where it's like you both deal damage and heal, or you both disarm and magic immune. But in the same sense, you have like a limited number of resources that you can spend on different things, and you need to determine is this a defensive or an offensive fight. If it's a defensive fight, you need to make sure you have one uh, one Lethal left that can cast the third spell. And um, is this the type of fight where you commit all in on dealing damage or do you just zone them with like, you can put down three twisters to just zone the fight, you know? Like yeah. if you don't get stopped, the enemy can't run into that mm -hmm. most of the time. So uh, yeah, it's like, it has different applications. I think that's a really good way to say it. You can do many different things. Fights. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to do a quick outro and then I'll be back with you guys in a sec for the VOD that is BRB. All right, so for everybody watching on YouTube, thank you for joining us. Um, if you're on the stream, just stay tuned, I guess. I don't know what we're going to do after this, but um, this is Chip version 1. Again, this is, I want to stress that this is extremely early in the process in terms of uh, what I consider to be the roadmap of this mod. This is very, very early. Four heroes is like nothing, um, and I understand that. But we are going to be coming out with, and again, the goal is one per week. And right now we have about, I want to say, 16 to 18 heroes that are pretty easily implement implementable into the game that won't take that much time to actually accomplish. Uh, so there's going to be a lot more heroes in the next, like six months from now, there's going to be like 12 more heroes essentially, right? Um, if not more, I'm going to try to do for more than that. Uh, to give you a little heads up, we're going to have another 5v5 gameplay, not tonight for those that are watching on the stream, but for the VOD in the next couple days for the other hero ooze. So you can get some more insight on how that hero works. Uh, and then after that, the release of Jeremy, uh, Khan, which is Axe's brother, will be coming out. And he is based, so not to give too much away, but um, it's going to be kind of a mix of heroes that we're going to be coming out with. Some will be heroes that are already in other mods, uh, perhaps tweaked a bit. Uh, others will be completely new creations. And others will be kind of like Jeremy, for example, if anybody played Han, he will be based off of Amun Ra, actually. Um, cause I'm trying to create heroes that I know are fun, but repackaging them in a way that makes sense for Dota. So you'll see some similarities with the hero, but he will still be a decent amount different. So, yep, that is it for now until next time, friends. Thanks for watching uh, and have a good day.